Hi, I'm Jose, and this is our good friend Matt from SBT. Matt, let's talk carburetor parts. I get a lot of customers who want to get the best quality possible when it comes to their parts. Uh, what are your suggestions? Well, um, there are a lot of parts out there that are substandard. Um, when it comes to SBT's carb kits, we test all of our parts so that they meet or exceed the OEM spec. So Matt, uh, before we get into the rebuilding process, uh, could you tell us a little bit of what's included in the, uh, in the carburetor rebuild kit? Yeah, um, we have uh, diaphragms as well as our uh, gaskets and O-rings as well as the fuel filter. But it's uh, pretty much everything you need to rebuild the carburetor. Well Matt, uh, how about you show us how to properly rebuild a carburetor? Okay, well first I recommend putting on gloves. Uh, we are going to be dealing with uh, gasoline. Uh, next, we're actually going to remove the screws on the fuel pump side of the carburetor. Then you're going to be taking the fuel pump off. All right, then we want to pull out the fuel filter. And that does it for this side of the carburetor. Then we're going to flip it around and open up our other side of the carb. Remove this face plate here. Then we also want to remove the diaphragm. All right, then we're going to want to remove our arm lever. And our pop-off pressure spring. Then we're going to remove our cover here. We also have our gasket here and also our main and pilot jet we're going to remove. And at this point we can start rebuilding. How about the jets? Are you going to replace the jets? Um, no, actually these jets are um, actually in good condition. Uh, the only time you would really want to replace jets is if you have any type of corrosion inside the actual jets, uh, compromising the actual jet itself. I can see that you left the uh, needle on the seat there. Um, now, typically when would you go ahead and replace those? Um, well, you want to replace the needle and seat, um, mostly when you can see that the uh, tip of the needle actually winds up in, indenting. So the, the tip itself, uh, it being like this and perfectly even on, on both sides or all the way around, um, it, when we need to replace it is because it, it actually develops that indentation right on that tip section? Exactly. And you'll be able to tell when you look at the tip, you'll see a line uh, when you hold it up to the light. Okay. Now, does the uh, needle and seat come uh, included with the carburetor rebuild kit? Um, no, actually, and the reason being is because there's many different sizes. And to find out the size, we're actually going to do that now. Uh, we have to actually remove the seat. So we're going to do that. And actually, we can now remove the seat. All right, and so that we can determine the size, we're going to look on the face of the seat. And there's, you have to look really hard, and sometimes you have to use a magnifying glass, but you'll be able to see a number on the face of the seat. Yeah, another way that um, we found that actually helps to clearly see that number is taking a, a Sharpie marker and kind of going over the edge of it, of the number itself. And what that does is it drops a little bit of that ink inside of the embossed section and it'll uh, allow the number to be revealed a little easier. Okay, so now we're gonna put in our seat. We're gonna put the O-ring on the end here, on the seat. It actually helps hold it in place as well. It makes a good seal. And then we're gonna insert the seat into the carburetor. So these needles and seats, are they available for sale on the website? Yes, sir. And then we're gonna attach the end to the needle. I'm going to drop that inside of the seat. And then we're going to put the uh, screw to hold it in place back in. Now we're going to put the gasket into the carburetor. We're going to remove the screw that was uh, on the cover plate of our jets. Now sometimes this screw is difficult to get off and you'll have to take a, a hammer and a Phillips head and just gently tap the uh, Phillips into the actual screw and then you'll be able to get it off. 
We replaced the check valve flap and now we're going to tighten that in. And now we're going to put the cover back over the jets. Putting in our screws. When we're putting the screws back inside the carburetor, do we need to worry about any kind of a torque spec or is hand tight sufficient? Um, actually just want to get them snug as possible. And now we're going to replace the pop-off pressure spring and the lever. Now Matt, um, I did notice that the kit does come with two different springs. Uh, what's the idea behind that? Well, um, the different carburetors take different springs. So um, generally a good place to start is um, to look at what spring you have in your carburetor and kind of compare that to what spring is in the kit, which you can see this one is pretty close. So we're going to start off there. In the event that um, neither one of the springs that's included in the carburetor uh, work uh, like we want them to uh, because it just gives us a different pop-off pressure. Do you guys have um, other uh, different spring tensions available on your website? Yes, correct. Um, you can order you know, all the different sizes that would normally uh, be available from Makuni. Okay. And now we're going to put the arm lever in and when we put the arm lever in we want to make sure that we're um, underneath of the needles retention spring here that you can see. All right, and now we're going to screw down the arm lever and we want to make sure that the pop-off pressure spring is actually centered. Um, you can see that the arm lever here actually has a divot where that arm pop-off pressure spring fits into. So now we're going to hit and screw it down now that we know that's in place. Okay, and now we're going to flip it over and do our fuel pump side. And we're going to start off by putting our fuel filter into the carburetor. And this carburetor actually uh, accommodates a gasket on this side. Um, as you can see, this fits perfectly here. And you also have carburetors that have the type with the O-ring, as you can see here. So this uh, carburetor rebuild kit actually accommodates both the O-ring type and just the regular gasket type. Correct. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and remove the uh, diaphragms in the fuel pump. At this time, we're going to go ahead and take off our gloves. We're not going to be dealing with any more fuel. It's just going to make uh, this operation a little bit easier. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and replace those diaphragms. And to do that, we're going to need to spray a little WD-40 on the ends. Now when we go to place these uh, check valves, we want to actually take a look at the line that's on them. There's a blue line. Um, it actually indicates which side is up. And you're able to tell, what, usually by the side that's darker with the line, that that side is going to be facing you when you go to put it in. And now we're going to do that. And we're finished putting our diaphragms in. And now we're going to put our other gasket here. You can see that they have two different shapes, which is meant to fit the carburetor that you've got. So you're only going to be using one. And we're going to go ahead and use this one because this actually matches the shape of the carburetor we have. Next, we're going to put our fuel pump on, and as you can see, it has the cutout for our fuel filter, and that side's actually going to go down. Now we're going to put on our gasket here. Um, so it's going to go a gasket, then we're going to have our clear diaphragm, and that's going to go down. And then we're going to put another gasket. Now, not all carburetors actually use this setup. Um, that's why the carburetor, also, the carburetor kit also comes with an O-ring that you would put actually on the fuel pump and then you would have your clear plastic diaphragm and then the gasket that goes on the outside. So now we're going to go ahead and put our uh, pulse on and we're going to go ahead and tighten that down. Okay, now that our fuel pump is, uh, side is complete, we're going to go ahead and uh, do our pop-off pressure test, which you're going to need, uh, which we have here is uh, just fuel line that is capped off on the end. Um, you're going to need to block off your pulse line on the carburetor. And now we're going to go ahead and cap off the fuel return. Matt, just a quick question while you're doing that. Um, how do you know which outlet is actually the fuel return and which one's the uh, inlet for fuel? On Makuni carburetors, you actually have arrows that are engraved into the metal. Um, 
the arrow pointing in is the fuel coming in and the arrow pointing out is your fuel return. Okay. So that's why you're going to put that on that, that section there. Make sure they're nice and secure. And now we're going to go ahead and put our pop-off pressure gauge onto the fuel in. All right. And to start the test, you're going to put it back over to the uh, needle and seat side of the carburetor. And you're actually going to have to spray just a little bit of WD-40 to help create a seal. And we're going to go ahead and put a towel over it um, so that we don't um, spray ourselves with any type of uh, WD-40. In instances like that, I like to uh, put on a pair of safety goggles, make sure that I don't get any uh, debris or foreign objects inside of my my eyes as we're doing a pressure test like this. Okay, and now all we're going to do is go ahead and pump up the gauge until it releases. Okay, so it popped off at 20. Um, now we want to go ahead and repeat the test just to make sure that we got an accurate reading. So you want to do it like two to three times. So our pop-off pressure for this is going to be about 20 PSI. To know what the PSI should be for your carburetor, uh, just refer to your manual. And now we're going to go ahead and put the diaphragm on this side. And then we're going to go ahead and screw the plate on this, closing up this side of the carburetor. Move your lines. And your carb is ready to install into your ski. Well, Matt, thank you for uh, showing us uh, how to uh, rebuild our carburetors and, uh, and the, also the, uh, the tips on identifying which gaskets to use and how to uh, actually verify the uh, size of the needle and seat that's inside of our carburetors. For more videos like this, uh, check out SVT's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Jose and this is Matt, and thank you for watching.